put me on pressure. <laughs> okay. Yeah, surely we go on a rampage, no doubt about it. And the worship was so good. Give, give the young team a great, uh, wonderful appreciation. And uh, it's so good to be in the presence of God. And I, I feel, uh, to be honest, it was a ministry uh, worship like you. It's not just, you know, it, is, it, it ministers to us that, you know, as the song goes on, as the uh, worship one after the other, when they were, it was like a, like a statement, a confession, and also uh, a, 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 something like, you know, you, you feel that, you know, that you, God is going to touch you, raise you, resurrect you, and you have hope. Uh, all these things, you know, it, it is such a blessing to hear those things. And I'm so glad to see all of you this morning. And uh, the people who have not come uh, for the past few days because of various reasons, we know the valid reasons. At least they make it valid at least. <laughs> but still it's okay, but uh, I'll just condense what I've been preaching. And then we're happy to see Brother Venkat uh, the back. Uh, we acknowledge your presence, sir. Thank you so much for being with us. I'm glad to see you. Uh, for this wonderful Sunday service. And uh, as uh, Pastor Vijay said, uh, uh, it has been a great uh, two days for me also, ministering to you guys what God has put on my heart, uh, that uh, we will definitely make it a, a winning team. You know, God brings all of us. I was just feeling, you know, God has joined how this church has come to pass. With a great purpose of God. When uh, Vijay got a job in Canada and he was you know, planning to come, Sureka, she was actually, God is using Sureka in a powerful way in India. And she was going with Pastor Leah and they were doing some great work and there was tremendous healings, things like that going on. And all of a sudden, we, I thought that Sureka would be a great blessing to us in Hyderabad church, you know, mm -hmm. because now she can be a great asset to us. So always every pastor feels that a nice person, you know, a leader is coming up. We feel that, oh, it's good for me. But suddenly God has a, a different plan and a purpose, which I do not know. And when they were coming, so I felt a little hurt actually. So when you lose a, a leader, you feel a natural thing, you know, nothing wrong in that, but natural feeling. But I was praying and asking God. So, lost to India, gain to Canada. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, I then prayed, Lord, Lord, it should never be lost to India also because she'll be coming, you know, on a periodical time so she can be a blessing to the nation of India also. And then, when they came here, I was just uh, praying, I told the uh, uh, your pastor, Sureka, that uh, don't go and be as a, a just a Christian or going to some church, but uh, you plant a church for the glory of God. Mm -hmm. And she took that and both Vijay said yes, they were uh, in together because one person says yes, it doesn't happen. They have to come in agreement, uh, wife and husband, and uh, Vijay gave such a tremendous support to her in all her activities and I appreciate Sunny and even Deepu also, they stood with them. And it's, it's family is first, like, you know, when you want to do something, your family has to be, uh, it has to be with you. So, but together, today I could see uh, God is blessing this city and touch your lives through their ministry. And uh, it's not just uh, something has happened, it's just a beginning. It's just a beginning, you see, the end will be glorious. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to see the churches being planted across the uh, nation of Canada. How many of you believe that? Uh? Hallelujah. When I heard the testimony of Hina, I, I always feel it's not just pastors pray, even leaders and you know, people pray and things happen. That is the best, uh, that is a healthy church actually. So give Lord a big round of applause. I want to listen to uh, testimonies from young people also. When they go and they say, uh, you 
know, uh, daddy, when I went and prayed for somebody, he was healed. I want to hear those testimonies of young people touching the lives of young people. When I was going to Bhutan, my son John, he was young, he said, Daddy, I want to come with you. Uh, then I said, no, 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 we, I, I wanted to discourage him. I said, no, no, we can't take everybody, anybody. The people who can pray for the sick and sick get healed, those are the people who are qualified. Because we have to discourage him. Then he came up with a uh, great testimony. He said, Dad, you know what? When my, uh, uh, my classmate, he was sick, having a stomach pain, he asked me to pray and I prayed, he was healed. I said, oh, this guy is already come up with another thing. Then I said, no, 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 not one or two, it should be more. <laughs> so finally, I just said, you know, I have to go. That's how you, know, you need to encourage people, the potential what they have, what God has put in them. This morning, I was, uh, I want to share three things for you. Uh, for your life and one is the purpose of God on your life. What is the purpose of God on your life? And uh, what potential God has kept in your life? The purpose of God, the potential uh, God has kept in your life and the process He will take you to that place. The process. God will take you to the place where He has purposed. So for this church, God has a purpose. And God has kept the potential in you and God wants to take you to that place. How many of you believe that God already finishes first and starts second? I'm, I'm so excited to confess that word because my journey is finished in the Lord. It is done deal. In the spirit realm it is a done deal. God knows my last day. God knows where he is going to take me. And God has finished the work. You might ask me, Pastor, how that happens? God gave a dream to Joseph. What did he say? You are going to be the Prime Minister of Egypt. Your brothers are going to bow down before you. So that was the, it was a done deal in the spirit realm. Well, when God speaks uh, something, when God shows you something, he doesn't scratch his head. He is 100% sure about what he is going to tell you. When God says something to you this morning that is going to happen in your life, no matter what obstacle you are going to face in your life. It's only one thing God wants from you is your willingness to walk with him. Lord, I am willing. I want to walk with you. God will take you to that place, beloved. In the process, there could be so many things. I'm going to explain you how those things will come. But let's talk with the purpose of God in our lives. What do you mean by the purpose of God? You know, the original intent of God. The original plan for each one of us. When God sent you to this world, God sent you with a purpose keeping in his mind, in his heart. That this is what this person has to accomplish in his life, in her life. And also, God joins the family, and God's, uh, no, God's purpose for a family is, through this family, this is my purpose to be accomplished, as a family. Now you need to understand one thing, as an individual, God's purpose on you, as a family, God's purpose on you, as a church, God's purpose on your life. As a church, what is the purpose of God on this church? God always makes sure that his kingdom should be extended in a powerful way. The beauty of Sion Fellowship is, it is not, it will not just focus on one person, it is with the focus on the body of Christ. Each member should be as strong as, a, you know, as a mighty man of God. That's what... Uh, the vision of sign fellowship. The people who are sitting here, you can move in the miraculous signs and wonders as Lord anoints you, beloved. That should be your passion for God. And you should see miracles happening, changing the lives of the people, touching the lives of the people, transforming the lives of the people. Wherever you go, and as I told you, you carry the presence of God. 
you carry the presence of God, things starts happening. Things starts happening. Absolutely. I mean, uh, the, the negative situation in that house will be going on. I have seen that happening in my life. When I enter into the house, the people said, till now we were thinking differently, something uh, negative, but now, Pastor, something God has done in our lives, we are positive now. God is going to do things in our lives. Then I said, Lord, what is the difference? Because you carry the presence of God with you. You carry the presence of God with you where you are working, the people will be blessed to the God. The purpose of God on our lives, in the life of the church, is so important. You know, when God put, uh, uh, you know, um, Adam in the Garden of Eden, he gave him four things. Four things, you know, in the Garden of Eden, he said, you tend, tend, keep it. And God gave him a command. God put him in the Garden of Eden. Because the original purpose of God is to relate to the man. God wants to relate to you and me. Because I always feel when, when uh, you know, uh, godly imagination, when devil, when Satan, Lucifer rebelled against God, when Lucifer, Lucifer wants to raise his, uh, you know, seat above God, uh, throne above God, God kicked him out of uh, heaven. And it has fallen on the earth. How many you know that? That's why the earth has become void. And that is, that is the big bang theory. You know, when God kicks somebody out of heaven, all, all of a sudden the devil falls on the, uh, on, the, on the earth, it makes a big sound. That's called big bang theory. For scientists, they were struggling in their mind so much, you know, wasting millions of dollars. If they would have come to me, I would have told them the, the theory of Big Bang. You know? <laughs> nothing, nothing. God kicked the devil out of the heaven. It has fallen on the earth, made a big sound. That's the Big Bang theory. So when devil, then God came down and spoke to the devil. And God said, you, I have, I have made you as an archangel to worship me. You are the, you are the, like a morning star. But you rebelled against me. Now, you know what I am going to do now? I will put life in this dirt. Who is that dirt? We. We are the dirt. I put my life in this dirt and this dirt is going to worship me. This dirt is going to worship me. And not only this dirt is going to worship me, and this dirt is going to rule on my behalf. God has given two things. God wants to relate to the dirt, and God wants to release the dirt to rule on his behalf. What a, what a, I mean, can you imagine, can you keep the dirt inside of your house? No, no way. We all are... Uh, you know, Swachh Bharat. In India, there is a Swachh Bharat. Everywhere Swachh Bharat, you know. Everybody is Swachh, Swachh, Swachh. But God said, it's not Swachh Bharat. You keep that, bring the dirt inside your house and make the, glorify this dirt uh, as a man. That is God's love for us, beloved. God intended that we should relate to Him. You are deep within you, always wants to see God. There is no other go. Until, unless you find God, your journey searching God will never be over. Some of your testimonies will be like that only. You are there in some other, some other place, but when you see the real God coming into your life, that is going to be a big time. Let me tell you my dad's story. When my dad was a police officer, and he was he used to drink a lot because of his police uh, heavy pressure, uh, why it so happened, you know, he had a bad liver and when he went to the doctors, they said he's going to die within four months. And he was running from pillar to post. Where I will get my life back? Because he has eight children and an illiterate wife. If he dies, they will be on the roads. But uh, it so happened when he was standing before a worship place, uh, that's not a church, but another worship place. 
and uh, pleading for his life, Jesus spoke to him in audible voice. He said, you know, uh, when he was crying that somebody can help me, then uh, Jesus said, do you know whom you are worshipping? And uh, my dad turned back because he felt a mild electric shock. He turned back and said, who are you? And the voice has become so strong. He said, I am Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I am the living God. You are worshipping which are not true gods. And my dad, he was uh, so shocked to hear those voice. And uh, the, uh, Jesus went on speaking to him. And he said, if you believe in me, I will heal you. That's the good news for my dad. Because he was dying. And then, I will not only heal you, I will save you. Because that's what every man needs. Salvation by the blood of Jesus Christ. By accepting him as Lord and Savior. And then, I, he said, I will use you in my ministry. Today I'm standing here because God told my dad, I will use you in my ministry. And God says, it passes to the generations, beloved. Here you are sitting here, the blessings what you carry, it passes through your generations. Beloved. Not just for you, you can pass it on to the generations. I used to see my dad. I used to thank God. Thank you, Jesus. Because my dad was dying. You know, you just touched him and healed him and saved him. I want to serve you all the days of my life. I was so thankful to God because if he would not have come to our rescue, we would have been no more by this time. We would have been in the history of, you know, a gone case. That's how God's love has touched all our lives with the world. So, there is a purpose. That's why, you know, when we were dirt, we were in that gutter. God's love touched us. And God's love not only touched us, God's love make us to stand and it revealed His purpose to us. The purpose is to serve Him, to establish His kingdom in all through our lives. So when God has a purpose for us, you need to know what is the purpose of God in your life. It is not just, you know, you are not just come to live and survive. You know, we, what people, what people need in this world, they need a nice house. If you want a nice house, go to Brother Venkat. He will provide you a nice house. Nice house. And what do you want? You need a, a nice car. You know, you need a nice car. You need a good bank balance. And you need a good wife who should say always yes to you. Many husbands feel that, you know, a Lord, give me a wife before marriage. Give me a wife who will always say yes to me. But that is not going to happen. It will go other way around. You will say yes to everything what she says. <laughs> other way around. You expect something, but something different happens in your life. It's okay, no problem. But you know, you live, you live for yourself. You live for yourself. It is only a survival in the world. And God says, you live for me. That is a revival in your life. And not only it is for you, you bring revival to your families, your community, your city. Hallelujah. The purpose in our lives is not just these things. There is something beyond this that we should relate to God and we should rule for God. Two important things in our lives. When you as a Christian always relate to God. You know, God will take care of all that, you know, what you desire. You, you need not, you know, you need not work. Uh, Lord, I have this desire. I want to fulfill this desire. Psalm 37.4 says, you know, delight yourself in the Lord. You delight yourself in the Lord. He will fulfill your heart desires. What is your heart desire? He knows better than you. He will fulfill your heart desires. So that's how the original intent of God is to relate to Him, you know, relate to Him and enjoy His presence and also rule on His behalf. So God has kept that, uh, you know, the power in our tongue. How many of you know that your tongue has power? Tongue has tremendous power. 
uh, Proverbs 18.21 says, uh, The life and death in the power of uh, tongue. The life and death is in the power of tongue. You need to, uh, you know, you should not never say that, you know, if you do this, I will die. You might die, but things will not happen. In India, I don't know about Canada, but in India, when wife and husband quarrel, the sub husband sometimes he will say, no, you don't know my importance. You know, if I die, you know me. You know my importance. So he will confess that I will die. So if you confess you will die, what will happen? What the, what the Bible says, the, the tongue has, tell me, the tongue has power. So if you say, I will die, God, what God will say? Amen. <laughs> because your tongue has power and God has to say Amen. When God says Amen, that will happen. And uh, you might die, but your wife will not, uh, you know, get uh, the jnanam what she gets. The jnanam means the wisdom. It's gone case. Sir. <laughs> so that's why never ever confess a negative word in your life, beloved. You know? Because God has given that authority to rule over the, so that our tongue has a great power. That's why when you, uh, when you speak about your children, never speak a negative word. Never ever speak a negative word. As I have three kids, I told you, I made up this, but God has given me grace. When, I was, when my kids were too young, God gave me this revelation. Somebody spoke to me that never confess a negative word on your son, on your child. So my son John used to come. He used to come. I used to tell him, John, you are a good boy. It's a done deal. Full stop. No coward. You are a good boy. Always. I say you are a good boy. So he used to come and say, Dad, I'm a good boy. Yes, you are a good boy. No negative confession. So he used to play with his toys, he used to come with his toys and, uh, and while playing, he used to break the toys. Uh, now he comes with a broken toy to me. Says, Dad, am I still a good boy? Now you tell me what should I do now. I used to get so upset inside because that's a costly toy, this guy has broken the toy. I, would have, I wanted to discipline him. John, you should not have done that. You are not you are a naughty boy. I never said that. Because I have made up my mind not to say a negative word. I used to look at him. Oh, a lot of commotion inside. Oh, what's that? John, you are a good boy. <laughs> Still, you are a good boy. He used to look at me. He used to look at the toy. And give a smile, sarcastic smile. Dad, he didn't say anything to me. I can break another toy also now. He used to go. I realized one thing. Because your tongue has a power. I don't know about you guys. In India, they never say a negative word. Even in other faiths also. If the... If everything is gone, you know, I mean, everything is, you know, if you are running short of all your groceries, they never say it is over. Am I right? Some of you know that. They say it is full. One of my Brahmin friends, you know, he, I used to go to his house regularly. His wife was telling uh, to uh, my friend's uh, dad, you know, they were talking, and the auntie was talking to auntie. He said, uh, the, the, all the groceries are full. Go and get something from the market. I was shocked. What is this? You know, all are full. Why is this? You know, is she really teasing this guy? No, God making him to go all the time. You know, tormenting him. No, because never to confess a negative word. If it is gone, it is gone. It's full. It is full. I'm healthy, you are healthy. Every day morning you get up and say, Oh, I'm sick. <laughs> you are sick. The body has got, you know, tongue is like a manager to the body. How many of you know that? Tongue is like a manager. When you get up in the morning, you say, You know, today I'm happy, I'm ready to work. The manager says to the entire body, Hey, Master is ready for work. Get up guys, get ready. 
The master said, today, oh, I am having headache, all that. I cannot get out away from the bed. You know what the manager says? Guys, the master is not willing to get away from the bed. Everything, just get into the, what you call, uh, in a sleeping mode. You will never get up. You see that happens. Yeah. So the power of the tongue will be the word. This morning I want to encourage you because if you want to fulfill God's purposes in your life, be positive. Because that is what God wants us. Because the, the potential what God has given to us, you know, you know, uh, like uh, uh, 1 John 5, 4 says, whatever is born of God, whatever is born of God will overcome the world. So we are all born of God. Am I right? Yeah. We are all born of God. So we have got the potential to overcome the world. Amen. I mean you cannot. That's why I said if you are a Christian the first thing you have to delete from your life dictionary is uh, defeat and depression. Take that out. Because God has given us such a potential to overcome the world. Let me tell you something. You might be knowing, but let me tell you this, beloved. You know what? Uh, when Jesus Christ uh, was coming to this world, his birth, his birth is supernatural. Gabriel came to Mother Mary and said, uh, the, the power of the Holy Ghost will come upon him and you will be conceived by the power of the Holy Ghost. And, uh, you know, you will have a child, his name is Jesus, and he will save his people from their sins, by his blood. By his blood. Now, let me tell you, the blood which Jesus Christ has got is not from Mother Mary. Amen. How many doctors will say yes to that? It's not from Mother Mary. It is the blood which has directly come from heaven. The holy blood. Mary has given her womb for nine months to feed Jesus. How many of you know that the mother's blood mixes with the child's blood? He will die. Right? He will die. So Mary has just given the, the, the feeding to Jesus for nine months so that he will come out to be the son of God. Now Mary was saved by the blood of Jesus Christ whom she has given birth. So your coming into the kingdom is so precious because you got such a DNA which is absolutely from heaven. We belong to heaven and heaven never sees defeat in their life, sir, in his life. So that's why I want to encourage you the potential what you have got. As I told you, in the uh, a few days back, it comes to the attitude. It comes to the attitude. You need to have an attitude. The attitude becomes a habit, uh, as a behavior. And the behavior becomes a habit. Habit becomes a character in your life. It starts with your attitude. How you look at things. How you do things. Like uh, uh, Vijay was asking me to play uh, ra cricket, you know. Cricket and you know, all rampant, uh, what you call the rampage. Rampage, you know, what is that? See, if you are on the last uh, overs, you hit every ball, try to hit every ball six. Uh, some of you must be knowing cricket. Uh, and I want you to learn cricket because when you go to heaven, you have to play cricket. <laughs> no other game, no Canadian game, no ice hockey, no, no basketball, only cricket. Uh. So, your attitude makes a big difference. I am a cricket player. I used to play cricket and even now I play cricket at this age because uh, I don't feel in the kingdom age doesn't matter. If you are as healthy as you are, no problem. So the ball, the same ball, if you are vulnerable, if you are tentative, it might go at the catch. The same ball, if you are strong enough with a strong attitude, that will go for a six pillar. Right? It all depends. It's not about the ball which who has, who has bowled it, but it is the bad, the attitude you have to hit the ball. The attitude makes a difference.
you know, I travel a lot, you know, in the, these days, I travel a lot. Uh, uh, normally, because of my travel, a uh, mileage, sometimes I get into business class. I get into business class. So if I am in the economy class, some of you know, always there will be pushing and pulling, right? Pushing and pulling, you know, because you, you want to go early to keep your bag there, because somebody might take your space. So always there is some, you know, uh, tentativeness and, uh, you know, some kind of, uh, you know, anxiety will be there. So I want to be the first person. So you will be the line all the time. So once I got, uh, when I was traveling, they said, you know, you, uh, the guy went there, what is the man? They said, that's getting red color. And they said, you are into business class. Sir. The moment I'm elevated to business class, by that I was like this, sir, what is this, uh, you know, thing and all, economy class and all. The moment they said, you are business class. <laughs> I thought, I am out of this uh, mass. This mass is no more there for me. I am a class now. I am a business class guy. You know, I just walk the way I like. And I don't need to struggle to stand in the line. When they say that, you know, the first and business class, they are coming ready for boarding, I just walk just like that, you know. So I am a business class guy. You know, when you pass through the business class people, they never see you actually. They will be always busy, you know, reading some newspaper, working on their laptop, as if they are the only guys who is going to save the whole world. <laughs> but I thought, okay, let me be like that. When I go and say, first they call, you know, uh, sir, uh, would you like to have some wine? I said, no, 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 I am divine already, so I don't need wine. <laughs> because I am a divine guy, so I don't need wine. Give me some Diet Coke, you know, I'll be more than happy for that. So the, for the day one, they always try to, you know, the moment you get inside, you get the business class thing. That is the attitude of a Christian. Because you are born of God. You are not the mass, you are the class. Because you are, Jesus Christ made you class. Give him a big round of applause. He made you a class, business class. The attitude. The attitude for life, beloved, is absolutely is different. That's why I always say, whenever I go and talk to somebody, I make my presence felt. I don't say, I'm not rude actually. I'm not rude, but still, I'm confident. You know, any statement if you make in Christ is a confident statement. Any statement you make out of Christ is an arrogant statement. In Christ, we are confident. Because we know that uh, He is always for us, He is always with us. So now, let me talk to you about uh, <coughs> the process of these things. How God is going to take you to that place. Because everything is a done deal in a certain day. Every valley has to be filled. Isaiah 40 says, every valley has, been, has to be filled and every mountain will be brought to know. That's God's heart for, for all of us. So every valley has to be filled. When God spoke to you know, Joseph, he said, I'm going to take you there. God speaks the purpose. He will never speak about the process in our lives. He's, he has sent his Holy Spirit, God. He said, I will send another comforter. What is that? Another comforter for us. He sends he sent another comforter. He's God. Holy Spirit is a God. He's one among Trinity. He's co-equal, co-eternal, co-existent. And He has come to this world to fulfill the, uh, to, uh, fulfill the work which is assigned to Him. This age belongs to Holy Spirit God. He is the most wisest person on the face of the earth. He is the strongest person on the face of the earth. All the wisdom at one side and he is at one side. Still he is the most wise person. So he is the strongest and wisest. Now let me talk to you about uh, the word comfort. In late Latin the word comfort is used for war. For battle. Comforte. Come 
forte. That means, you know, the, it is used for army, like the general says to all his soldiers, come forte. That means attack. But while they were translating that word, they thought already Christianity has become so against the state in those days, they, they thought if we write this kind of a translation, it doesn't work out. They might term us as anti-government people. So they just made it as a, a passive word. It's not aggressive word. The word comforte is an aggressive military term. That is the word actually. So the Christian word has really missed the essence of that word. Word comforte. Because he is aggressive. He is, he is, he is for war to win the battle below. So now let me tell you how it works out. You know, he he will so when we made that as a passive word, you know, some, that's what the church people come, the pastor what is your problem, sister? My problem is, you know, I have a problem. Problem is a problem. Always a problem. It's an eternal problem. Some people are so used to the problem even when they go to heaven, they take the problem with them. <laughs> No problem. <laughs> See, that is an eternal issue. But, but uh, you know, what the people, you know, when the pastor asks you, I have a problem, and they come, some people come and they put their uh, head here and they start, uh, you know, uh, say that, come, somebody come. You, know, you, you stand there only, not here. Because you have your shoulder here. You know that. How are you, Akin? Akin? So I'm, I'm done, Pastor. Today is not my good day, Pastor. I have a girlfriend, Pastor. She left me, Pastor. I'm, because this is a young guy. This, I'm, I'm relating to his problem. Not everybody's problem. She left me, Pastor. Not only she left me, Pastor, she's going with another guy, Pastor. Tears are rolling down. Tears are rolling down. Pastor doesn't know what to say. Because uh, it's a girlfriend issue. Who? What is that I can say? So I'm okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. It's okay. The another guy comes. Up. I have an issue, Pastor. Issue is very difficult. I can't even tell you. Don't tell me. I'll pray for you. Don't tell me. I'll pray for you. So okay, Pastor. I do. I you pray for me. Why you don't want to tell me it cannot be disclosed, Pastor? You have a very, very deep problem. No problem. Then I said, no problem, I'll pray for you. So passivity. All the churches come with a problem, with a passivity. They look at Holy Spirit God only as a babysitter. <laughs> babysitter. Come and sit, okay, okay. Time to change, all change, this change, everything. You know, milk you want, milk I can have something. Don't worry. Bone vita. And give that, you know, uh, what you call all those small, small things, bitter things, everything, take it, don't worry, don't worry. You know, it's all right. God will give you another girlfriend, don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> like this guy, you know, no, don't tell me any of your problem, but still God will know everything. I will pray about it, I will let you know about this. And these are the things happen in the church. Am I right or wrong? Yes. You tell me if I am wrong, Pastor, you are totally wrong. We never do that, Pastor. <laughs> You never know. That's what happens. So when it ha this happens, now let me tell you how Holy Spirit God works. How, how He works. He says, His problem is a genuine problem. H hurts. When somebody whom you like, they, they hurt you, they speak against you, it hurts. Am I right or not? It hurts. That's human. Nothing wrong in that. You cannot uh, act as if, oh, whatever you say, I don't have any problem, I still be happy, I'll be singing songs. That will not happen. That's only an action. You heard when somebody speaks good about you, you are happy. Somebody speaks bad about you, you are hurt. You are sad. The sadness. Now, Holy Spirit God says, don't worry. Because the work of the Holy Spirit God is to strengthen you from inside out. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He will take, he knows your problem. He says, now I know your problem. I will make you strong. Because you are designed to be an overcomer. Amen. 
you are designed to be an ode to rule on my behalf. If you know Trump says, you know, Pastor Mohan Babu, you are my delegated authority in, in America. What will I do? I first of all I go to White House and take my place. <laughs> because that is what, you know, I, I say that, yes, I tell Trump, I am representative of Trump. Anything you want, not only representative of Trump, and my word is always carries weight. So likewise, God said. You are delegated from my behalf. Now your problem, I know. But I will strengthen you from inside out. By the word of God. By strengthening you. By talking to you. By ministering to you. Today God is ministering to some of you while I am teaching. While I am preaching. They said, oh, we, were, we should not have done that. Oh, I was like a childish in the past. How could I carry these things in my life? So, Holy Spirit, God will strengthen him from inside out. A day will come, he will be like a mighty man of God. Now, Achilles is like a strong guy. Hallelujah. That is the work of the Holy Spirit, God. When you are troubled, when you are troubled, when you are hurt, you know what Holy Spirit, God says, I will make you strong. I will make you strong from inside out. You, have, you will face the devil and you will trample the devil. Because I am with you, I am in you, and I will strengthen you, and I will take you there. Amen. That is the work of the Holy Spirit, God. People, oh, thank you, God bless you. It's only a story, don't take it seriously. <laughs> okay. You know, uh, I'll tell you my story once it happened. How hurt really matters in somebody's life. You know, as I told you, I was, uh, or I used to play cricket uh, uh, a lot. So while I was playing cricket, uh, somebody hit so hard I would have to catch uh, it. Uh, it broke my little finger. So I was hurt, went to hospital, had a big bandage. The next week I was supposed to travel to US. I said, Lord, well, how I can do this because it's so hurting. And you know, I put my big bandage on that. So I went to, again, uh, check-in point and I was keeping this because I don't want to show my hurt to anybody because uh, uh, I don't want to do that. But uh, one girl came and she said, hey, sir, uh, it seems you are hurt. Yeah, I'm hurt. You need not stand in this line, sir, because you are hurt. We have a special line for you. <laughs> then you know what I did? Oh, this is working. My hurt is working now. You know what I did, you know, I, instead of keeping here, I was keeping there. Then I thought, let me make best use of my hurt. Because they were saying, ah, oh, how did it happen, sir? All the girls, you know, all the check-in girls, you know, they were there. How did it happen, pastor? As not pastor, mister, sir. And I said, oh, I was playing cricket. Oh, still you play cricket? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I play cricket, you know. Because uh, I, I, when I die, I look young. Yeah. Yeah. You know that. Uh, yeah. These days, I, I could not die. That's why you look some uh, salt and pepper. And uh, salt is more, pepper is less. <laughs> <laughs> salt is more, pepper. But when I go back home, no salt at all. Only pepper. <laughs> 23rd night, I'll go. And 24th, early morning, I'll make myself and a totally different person. So, you know, they were asking me, then I thought, okay, let me take the advantage of my hurt. So I said, I need a best seat uh, because nobody should hurt me. Nobody should hurt me. And they said, oh, surely, pa, surely, sir, surely. So what do you do, sir? I'm a pastor. Oh, pastor, oh, we we'll gave you the best seat. So they gave me the best seat, not the business class, but the best seat, the corner seat. Every hairostress, they were coming. Oh, how, how, how did it happen, sir? Pastor, oh, ah, oh, ah. <laughs> I, was, I was used to this ah, oh, 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 it's all right, it's okay. And I said, oh, these are so wonderful words. I was addicted to those words. Not only enjoying, I was getting addicted to those words. When I go to somebody and Eros is passing, 
I was looking at, oh, she's not telling me how holy. But she should come and say how holy. But I was so used to that. I was expecting somebody to say that. So I directly went to Corpus Christi, it's the big church, two services, 1500 people. So I was uh, first service, and when I, I went to that uh, uh, pastor, he said, uh, he took me to a doctor, doctor came to, my, uh, to our house, and he said, oh, it has to be open, it has to be open because AIDS should go. So I take, took out that, I preached the word, and everybody was excited, happy, and one girl came to me and she said, Pastor, that was a great word. She took my, you know, right hand, she was squeezing. Great word. I said, oh! My man, my man inside, how can I scream when a girl squeezes me? What she will think? Oh, he is looking like a man, but he is very tender. I don't want to be tender, I want to be like a man, like a man. But that was fading so much. Almost I went to hell and I came out. The next day, the next, uh, next moment, I went to pastor and said, Pastor, I need a bandage. I want to survive for next service also. Somebody comes and squeezes, I'll be done, done. So he said, okay, graciously put that. While I was ready for preaching, the Holy Spirit God ministered to me. You know what he said? Don't enjoy your hurt. Every hurt is for a season. Don't take the hurt to your grave. If you are 